In this video, I'm going to show you how to play God of War Ascension on PC with the RPCS3 emulator. This is a new version of my original guide now covering more details on the setup process and also the updated settings for the best performance and stability in this game. So let's get going. If you're planning on buying on Amazon, please use my affiliate link below in the description. Any product on the website will count and you will be directly supporting the channel. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna get is the emulator itself. The link for this page will be on the description of this video. And this emulator is available on Windows, Linux and Mac OS, but this tutorial is for Windows PC. So right here on the Windows section, you're gonna click right here where it says download for x64. Go ahead and click on this one and put the file on the desktop of your computer. Also, still here on this page, you're gonna scroll down a little bit and where it says installing on Windows, you're also going to download Visual C++. This is required in order for the emulator to work. So go ahead and click on this one to download the file and also put it on the same place, the desktop of your PC. Next, we're gonna get 7-zip. This is required for extracting files if you are on Windows 10. But if you are on Windows 11, you can also get this file too, but Windows 11 has its own extracting feature, right? So you can just use that as well. But if you are on Windows 10 on 7-zip, click here on this download button to get the file. And you're also going to drop this on the desktop of your PC. Now on your desktop, you should have all three files with you, right? And we're going to start by installing VC++. It is this file right here. So go ahead and double click on this file and this window will open up for you. And there is a chance that you already have VC++ installed on your PC. If you played games on your PC before, actual PC games that is, then there is a good chance that you already have it, which is the case for me right here. It says right here, modify installation. So if this window shows up for you, you don't have to install this. You can go ahead and close this, but if it does not, then you're just going to keep clicking on next until it is fully installed. Next, we're going to install 7-zip if you also got this file. And this one is very straightforward. You just have to double click on the 7z file and this window will show up. And all you got to do is just click here on the install button with a few moments. And there you go. It's already installed. So go ahead and click on close. And you should see that both icons are going to look like the one that I have here, which means that 7-zip is working as it should. Now, at this point, you can go ahead and delete VC++ and also 7-z. We're not going to need this anymore. You're just going to need the emulator file itself. So what you're going to do here on the RPCS3 file, you're going to click on it with the right button and then put your mouse on top of 7-zip and then you're gonna click on extract to and the name of the emulator. That way, all the files will be inside a folder. There you go. You should now have this folder with you. And at this point, you can delete the original zip file. We're not gonna need this anymore. So in here, you can go ahead and rename the folder if you want. I'm just gonna keep mine with the default name. And now you're going to double click on this folder to open. And as such, you're going to see all these files right here. And to start the emulator, you just have to double click on the RPCS3 application file. So go ahead and do that. And then it's going to take you to this window. In here, you can do some stuff like create a desktop shortcut or also change the theme of the emulator. This one is going to be up to you. Now to move on, turn off the show at startup option and enable the I have read the quick start guide and then just click on continue. And there you go. Now the emulator will show up for you. This would be a good time to subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video. Now, the first thing we're going to do with the emulator is install the firmware and we can get that on the official Sony website. The link for this page will be on the description of the video. So in here, you're going to scroll down a little bit and arrive at this section, how to update PS3 system software. So you're going to click on this option, update using a computer, and then you're going to see this button showing up for you. For most people, just clicking on this button doesn't work. The download doesn't start for whatever reason. So what you're going to do here, you're going to click on this button with the right button of your mouse. And on this option, 
you're gonna select copy link address. And then you're gonna paste this link on the browser that you are using. So you can go ahead and just right click on this one and select the paste option. Or you can just press Ctrl V as well. And now you just have to press enter to start the download. And you're going to download the firmware file to the same emulator folder. Here on my emulator folder, you can see that I have the firmware with me. It is this file, ps3update.pup. So now what you're gonna do, go back to the emulator, click on the first option, file, and then you're gonna select install firmware. It should open the emulator folder by default. So now you just have to double click on the firmware file. In case this file isn't showing up for you, you're gonna go here to the bottom right side of the screen, click on PS3 update, and then you're gonna change this to all files. Then you're gonna see everything and including the firmware as well. So go ahead and double click on this one and it's gonna take you back to the emulator and install the firmware. It should only take a few seconds and there you go. Go ahead and click on OK. And now it's going to compile the firmware PPU modules, but this one shouldn't take long. This would be a good time to subscribe to the channel and also leave a like on this video. Now with this out of the way, you're gonna go back to the emulator folder and you're gonna see that there's this folder here called games that was already created by the emulator. And this is where you're going to drop the game file for God of War. If you have a copy of the game with you, you can dump that to your PC to play it. This would be the ideal way of doing this. And I'm going to put the link on the description on a guide on how to do that. Or you can resort to sale the seven seas and get that from the internet. But this is something that I can't do here on the video because it's basically piracy and YouTube will delete the video if you do that. So if you did that, you're going to have the game as a ISO disk image file like this one. We have to extract this ISO or you can mount it as well. If you know how to do that, you can just right click on the file and select the mount option. But if you never did this before, we can extract the ISO, which can be less complicated in this case. So to do that, you're going to hold the shift on your keyboard and press the right button on your mouse. If you are on Windows 11, if you're still on Windows 10, you can just right click on it. And then you're going to select the seven zip option. And then you're going to select this one, extract to God of War Ascension. Now just wait until the extracting is over. When it's over, you're going to see this folder and inside you're going to see the files very similar to this one. Now the emulator is ready to start the game. And at this point, you can go ahead and delete the original ISO of the game. But I would recommend you to do that only after you're done watching the tutorial and start the game. Just in case something goes wrong and you have to redo the whole process. OK, so for now, keep it as it is. Now, if you had the emulator open while doing all of this, you can just open it and then you're going to click on this refresh button and the game should appear right here. Now, as you can see, the emulator is going to tell you that the game is of the vanilla version and that there is a update available and it is very much recommended to update your game. For this game, actually, you definitely have to update it to 1.12. And to do that, we're going to use this program called Rusty PSN. The link will be on the description of this video as well. So in here, you're going to check on whatever it is the latest version available. You're going to click here on assets. And for Windows, this is the one you're going to download, Rusty PSN Windows.zip. So click on it to download, and you can put this anywhere on your PC. But on this tutorial, I'm going to drop this on the same emulator folder just to keep things organized. Now, back on the emulator folder, we can see the file right here. So we're going to have to extract this. So if you're on Windows 11, hold Shift and then press the right button of your mouse, select 7-zip. And then you're going to click on extract here. There's only a single file in this one, so you don't need to create a folder. And Windows will likely tell you that this program is unverified, but don't worry, this is safe to use. You can go ahead and delete the original zip file. We're not going to need that anymore. So before starting Rusty PSN, I'm going to recommend you to do one thing here on this folder. You're going to right click anywhere on it, select new and then click on folder. You can name this whatever you want, but I'm just going to call this updates. This is where we're going to download the updates for the game. 
You can download them anywhere on your PC, but I'm just doing this to keep everything in one place. Now, go ahead and start Rusty PSN, double click on it, and this is the program. So now, before doing anything else, you're going to click right here on this little gear, and then you're going to click on Pick Folder. Now we're going to select the updates folder we came up with here on the emulator folder. There you go. Click on it once and then select folder. Now click on save settings. To download the updates for the game, we're going to need the serial code of it and we can get that on the emulator. So go back to it and it is this code right here. So now you can just right click on the game, select copy info and then copy serial. Now go back to Rusty PSN and right here, title serial, click on it and press Ctrl V. Or you can right click on it and select the paste option. Now click on search for updates. And just like that, Rusty PSN will find all the updates available for that one game. And for God of War Ascension, it is very much recommended now that you download every update available. So go ahead and click on this download all option and just wait until this is finished. There you go. Everything is ready. You can close Rusty PSN now. And back on the emulator, you're going to click on File and then Install Packages. Should open the emulator folder by default. So now locate the Updates folder. There should be a folder with the name of the game. Double click on that and inside all the updates available. So now what you're going to do here is press and hold the left button on your mouse and select every update starting from the top to the bottom like this so that they get in order. Then click on open and you should see this on the emulator. Make sure that every update is in order right here because if you don't, they're going to be installed in the wrong order and it will not work. Should be okay if you did it like me. So now you can go ahead and click on install. And there you go, click on okay. And now the game is fully updated. Now the next step is tweaking the emulator settings to give us the best performance and stability in this game. And the first thing we're going to do is enable the game patches. And to go there, you just have to right click on the game and click on manage game patches. This window will open and on the first time, you're going to see this window here to update patches. Go ahead and click on yes and then click on OK. Now you're going to see the game here. Double click on it and then double click on the one that says 1.12. That is the version of the game. And here we have the patches. The patches that help with the performance are Disable MLAA and Disable Motion Blur. The other one is optional, so you can disable this and start the game to see what it looks like if you prefer playing games without that. But for now, I'm going to keep this one turned off. Now click on Apply and then Save. Next, we're going to tweak the emulator settings for this game. And this part is very important for performance and stability as well. Right click on the game once again and then select Create Custom Configuration. This window will open and under CPU, the only thing you have to change is here, SPU block size. Click on this one and change to Mega. Next, head over to GPU and under Zico Accuracy, click on this one and set to Approximate. And under additional settings, select right color buffers. You can see that we have resolution options on this emulator, but for this game, it is not recommended to change anything that is set here for the default values. But one thing you can do to make the game look better is under output scaling. Click on bilinear and change to fidelity FX super resolution. This will basically apply a sharpening filter on your game. And you can play here with how much you want that to be applied to your game. But personally for me, I like to keep this one at 40%. And there's pretty much no downside of using the super resolution here, but this whole thing is optional. Now head over to the advanced tab. And in here, you're going to enable accurate RSX reservation access. Under Sleep Timers Accuracy, change to as host and RSX FIFO Accuracy, change this to Atomic. I would also recommend you to go to the Emulator tab and disable the Show Shader Compilation. This is a notification that happens at the bottom of the screen every time the emulator is building the shaders as you play. So it's kind of annoying. And that's pretty much it for the settings. Click on Apply and then Save. 
The last thing we have to do is to configure your controller or keyboard to play the game. And to do that, you're going to click right here under pads. And this emulator supports pretty much all the controllers out there from PlayStation and Xbox and even third party controllers as well. So if you're going to use one of them, if you don't have your controller plugged in, go ahead and do that right now. And under handlers, you're going to click on keyboard and you just have to select the controller you're going to use. If you are using a official PlayStation controller, you just have to select the one here, DualShock 3, 4 or DualSense. But if you are using a Xbox controller or third party controller, the option that works most of the time is X input. I'm using a Xbox controller, so this is the one I'm going to select here. And the emulator will do the automatic mapping for you. Just make sure that the devices here is set to pad number one. If you want to remap any of these buttons, you just have to click on the one and then press that button on your controller. Just make sure that your controller is showing up right here under devices. And that's pretty much it. Click on save and we are ready to start the game. So you can just double click on it to start. When you start for the first time, you're going to see this window with all of these options. So go ahead and click on cancel. This is not related to the game. And when you start this for the first time, you're going to see this compile PPU modules window. You only have to do this for the first time you start the game. So it might take a little long to complete. So just wait until this is done. The game should start as such and you're ready to play it. I have many tutorial videos like this on the channel. So if you like what you saw, don't forget to check out my other stuff. Subscribe to the channel and like the video if you haven't already. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you soon.